Hello. Uh, so uh, my name is Ronnie Garza, and uh, today I'm going to be going over a software program called Max MSP. And um, this is just a sample program of, uh, of sort of how it works. The vocals were being affected earlier by, by basically three um, delay pedals that were software generated. And then um, there's a, um, a component that's that's uh, also interactive with uh, with light, and so depending on how the sensors are triggered, is this one? it changes the sound. Let's see. So I'm just sort of using the ambient light of of the room. So it kind of depends on how you move it, but all, all that these are doing are controlling a string of numbers, which you're seeing on the, on the screen right now. And we're going to get into sort of how to code that. Uh, but this is just sort of like a sample, um, so you can get an idea of um, what it looks like at the end. OK. So uh, let's get into the, uh, the program itself. Um, so the program was developed in the uh, in the late 80s. Um, it was called Max. Originally, it was just a numbers and MIDI manipulation program. Uh, you could uh, sort of code these things together, so that way you can manipulate uh, MIDI hardware uh, through a series of numbers that you could trigger in, in different ways. Uh, later on, in about 97, uh, they uh, introduced the MSP, which is the Max signal processing por uh, portion of it. And that allows you to generate sound, record sound, play sound. Um, and so it gives you a lot of different options for sound. Uh, and then in 2003, they introduced Jitter, uh, which allows you to manipulate video. So it's all done through the same sort of platform and, and coding environment. Um, and, and this is what it looks like when you open it up. It's just a blank page. It's not normally going to have that patcher down there. That's, that's for us. But it's normally just completely blank. And at the top, um, at the top here, you have a row of, uh, of objects. So that's what you see up here. Um, and so there's a bunch of different objects uh, that, that we use with Max, and, uh, and basically you can just grab them and connect them. Each object has, uh, has inlets and outlets that allow you to sort of connect them to each other. And that's how you generate uh, each, uh, each program. You build it out from, from the components themselves. So um, the most basic ones uh, we're going to go over are up in this top row over here. And uh, the first one on the left is the object box. When you put down a new object box, it just sort of brings you the new object list. And uh, you can kind of go through here and see uh, different, uh, different options for objects you can use. Or you can just type in an object um, like that. That's a metronome. Um, and uh, that would be set at uh, 300 milliseconds. So you can specify your objects, uh, or, you can, uh, uh, or you can just choose from the list. So let's go ahead, go ahead and get a little bit deeper in. Um, so here's the same object, the metro object, and, uh, and then a few others that we're going to go into. Before I go into the objects, I just want to uh, I'm gonna switch back over to edit mode real quick, and I'm going to take you to the help file. Each of these objects has a help file uh, for them. So that shows you all the options that they have for their inlets, the, what, what the arguments you can put into the top, and what they spit out at the bottom, the outlets. And each of these help files is a max patcher itself. So you can go into edit mode. You can copy and paste all this stuff into your own patch if you want to uh, take off of old examples. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty helpful uh, in that. And that's the way a lot of people learn how to use the program to begin with. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the Metro. And it takes a, a 1 or a 0. And that's that little toggle box at the top that just sent in a 1. And so now it's going at uh, 1,000 milliseconds. And if you want, you can modify it on the fly and speed up that, uh, that rate. Now, that metronome is connected to a counter object, and the counter object just gives you numbers. But in between the counter object is this gate, uh, just another object that uh, either allows the information to pass through or to be stopped. So uh, we're going to go ahead and open the gate, and we're going to see the counter start moving. Now, what I'm going to do over here on the side is I'm going to modify the counter so that way it has an upper limit. Uh, so I'm going to put 10 as the upper limit. And what that will do is you'll see uh, the counter then starts uh, doing laps. And on the left-hand side, you have what's called the current count. And on the, uh, uh, the left-hand side, you have the current count. On the right-hand side, you have the carry count, which is how many laps it's gone around. 
And you can use those uh, in, in any different kind of combination. Right now, I just sort of set it up for an example. So right now, uh, our carry count's at four. And once it hits six, it's going to start doing something because uh, it's attached to this past object down here. Um, now, the past object is just looking for it to go past the number five in the first case, number six in the second case, and number seven in the third case. So you'll see that uh, since it went past five, it went past six, and it went past seven, it then activated a bang underneath it, which then hit another counter, which moved forward one, one notch. When it moves forward one notch, it goes to zero. Moves forward a second notch, it goes to one. Moves forward a third time, it goes to two. So that selector object uh, right over here is just set up to receive those numbers. So you can set up the selector object to uh, select any, any group of numbers. So I have another selector on the left-hand side here that I had gated. So we're going to let that go through. And you can see it's, it's looking for a different set of numbers. It's looking for the number one, looking for the number five, and it's looking for the number nine. But that's set up to the current count, not the carry count. So you can just connect these any way that you want. If you wanted to change it on the fly, you could. Uh, but so right now when it hits one, the selector box is then triggering a message. So that uh, selector box is connected to line, uh, this line object. And line takes messages. So uh, this first message box at the top is 1 to 150 in 1,000 milliseconds. The second one is uh, 150 to 1 in 3,000 milliseconds. So it's just going from that number to the second number in a certain time. And the selector is triggering when it should, when it should activate. Okay? So let's go in a little bit deeper and do some more max. So again, we're still in just the max um, coding uh, part of it yet. We're not doing any MSP. So um, with max, you can do basic math uh, up at the top. So right in here, you have these uh, arithmetic objects. So that's multiplication, division, uh, addition, and subtraction. And they're all going by 20 except for the, the first one. And it's also uh, gated or switched. So I have a couple of different options for what I want to go in there. So I'm going to go ahead and switch it over and, uh, and make it take off of the, off of the first patch. We're sending, well, we're sending in information through the patcher itself. Uh, up at the top, we have these big boxes up here. Those are actually artificial inlets and outlets. In your, in your little sub-patcher, you can make them like an object themselves by creating little inlets and outlets to send in information. You can also use, uh, you can also use uh, objects like the send and receive object over here to, uh, to send in information as well. So uh, we have send and receive down here at the bottom. We have it in the first patcher. So if I wanted to send a number 10 to the second patch, it'll pop up over here just with the send object and a corresponding uh, receive object. Okay, So um, that's, that's doing some math on, uh, on the right side. And on the left side, uh, there's a scale object. Uh, scale is also pretty helpful. Um, it allows you to take a string of numbers, a range of numbers, and then scale that to what you might find useful. So right now I'm taking 0 to 900. And I'm, on the first one, I'm scaling it uh, between 0 and 127. Uh, and then the second one, I'm going from 0 to 900. I'm scaling it from 0 0.01 to 0 0.9. Um, and uh, 0 to 127 is useful for sliders. Uh, 0 to 0.9 or, or to 1 is useful for, for other things. So uh, that, that just helps you sort of get, get a range of numbers that's useful to you. So now we're going to go in uh, into the MSP part of things. So uh, first, on the right-hand side, we have cycle and signal multiply. So the MSP objects all have this little tilde object, or the tilde character at the, at the end of the, of the title. And so we have cycle. And what cycle uh, is is an oscillator. So cycle is uh, an oscillator, and it can use uh, any frequency. So you would then input the frequency into cycle, and it'll generate that tone. Uh, so right now, we're taking, uh, we're receiving the, the uh, numbers from multiply, division, plus and minus, and we're going to, uh, to turn those into frequencies. Now, we haven't turned on the sound yet uh, because we haven't, uh, we haven't gone over to the left part of our patch, uh, and that's our uh, audio input and output. So um, the ADC at the top, that's our analog to digital converter. That's your inputs, uh, and you uh, automatically start with two inputs, but you can specify for it to have more. If you have hardware that has more inputs, four inputs, eight inputs, you can make an ADC that has eight uh, inputs. Uh, and then our uh, digital to analog converter at the end is, uh, is where we get our sound from. So if you open, send in a message to open the, um, the, uh, the DAC, you'll get the DSP status. And that allows you to switch hardware if you're using certain hardware interfaces with your, 
uh, computer or you want to change the sampling rate uh, or various other things. Uh, so that's just some like uh, uh, settings that you can do. So the DAC also takes a one or a zero uh, to turn it on. So I have a little toggle box again that sends a one or a zero to the, to the object. So I can turn it off if I want to or leave it back on. And so now what we're hearing is we're hearing the frequencies from those cycles. Uh, and the, uh, the numbers are just being generated from, from kind of random math that we were inputting earlier. But now it's, it's, uh, it's telling the computer to, to go off certain frequencies off these four uh, oscillators. Okay, so now we're gonna go in a little bit deeper to MSP. Um, we have SF play and we have um, SF record. Uh, SF play is sound file player. Uh, it's another object, and you can use a mono uh, uh, sound file, or you can use a, a stereo sound file, um, and uh, and you can you can do a lot of different things with um, with sound file player. I'll just go ahead and start this. So um, um, right here, it's showing you where it is in the track. Uh, with those, that set of numbers, that's just going to be where it's at in the sound file itself. The speed, you can change the speed on the fly if you want it to go half, half the rate or speed it up to twice the rate. Or you can seek it up to a little bit faster, a little bit, a little bit more forward in the, uh, in the track itself. I'm going to turn this down just a sec. And if I wanted to, at this point, I could record in uh, everything that's playing right now from uh, the sound file record. So sound file record, it also takes a message, uh, which is open. That'll specify the name of the file, and then it takes a one or a zero uh, with that toggle box to start the recording and stop the recording. And again, you can, you can uh, make the SF record larger to record more tracks. Uh, right now, it's just set up as a two-channel recorder, and so it would record everything into a stereo track. Okay, so we're going to move in a little bit further. So we're going to go to, to Jitter now. So uh, Jitter is... Um, the video portion of, uh, of Max. So um, with Jitter, uh, it takes a different series of objects. You have your uh, jit.qt.movie, that's qt for QuickTime, and your jit.qt.record. Um, so again, uh, it's the same sort of idea. Um, it's a player, and then it's also a recorder. So uh, it takes various different uh, messages here up at the top. So we're gonna just uh, read in a, uh, a track, a movie. And then it starts with uh, a metro. That's what it actually allows it to, to start playing. And um, with this, you can, you can set it to full screen, or you can set it here. This is just sort of like an edit mode. Uh, but you can also change the rate that it's going, um, or you can, um, uh, you can stop it, you can pause it, you can restart it. Uh, and there's a lot of different options that you can, that you can do for that. Let me open up the uh, help file on this real quick. You can see that. Something like the, the Jitter QuickTime objects, there's a lot of different options uh, that you can do. So we're just going over very, very basics right now. Um, so now we're going to get into the uh, interactive part. And this is just another MSP object. So this is the Fiddle object. And uh, what Fiddle is doing is it's, it's taking in your audio and it's breaking it down into its pitch and its amplitude. And that, again, you can just use as a string of numbers. Um, what I've done, sort of hidden behind the scenes uh, on this patch, is I've, I'm scaling all of these numbers. So this is a scale object, this is a scale object, this is another scale object uh, right here. Um, and that allows me to, uh, to, to take what's coming in, in this case through the, uh, through the glove controller, and then just use it as a string of numbers. So right now it's set up to affect the video. So that's the um, that's the sort of string of numbers up here. This isn't this isn't really like um, an actual performance piece. This is just sort of to get give you an idea that you can then just route numbers uh, to affect either uh, audio or video uh, through an external controller. Um, and it's just affecting the rate. At this point, it's just affecting the rate at how fast this thing plays. So uh, we can get it up to two, 
like, so like twice as fast, or we can bring it down um, to be let's see, a little bit closer to, to one. So, okay. That, that just kind of gives you the idea of how that of how that works together. Um, so, one more interactive uh, component I just wanted to go over real quick is uh, is this thing up here at the front. So this is built off of a USB keyboard, um, and all that it's doing is it's uh, it's making connections on the on the keyboard. So it's going to send in a number um, from based off of that key. So that key corresponds to the number 97. So I just set up a little selector object to look for 97, and then that just triggers a metro. And that can trigger any, any number of things. You can just turn it off, again, just like that. Um, if I were to hit one of these, it's not going to do anything, because it's not looking for those numbers. Um, but in this case, it's just looking for uh, the numbers. So this is a, another physical uh, controller, just like the, uh, just like the gloves. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what the gloves look like real quick over here on this uh, dot cam. Um, basically, this is what the gloves are like on the inside. It's just a, a circuit board of an uh, of um, optical theremin. And, um, and the theremin is putting out a tone. And, and then the, t the tone is being uh, recognized by the computer as uh, raw numbers, as a frequency or a pitch. And then you can scale those numbers and use those however you like. Um, but that's that's really all that's going on. It's connected to this thing, and this thing is is the same that's that's in there, just a little bit a little bit different. I don't know if you can see that very well. Yeah. So it's just a little a little circuit board. That's the same uh, diagram or schematic as as that thing right there. Um, and that's. And that's pretty much that um, as, far as, a, as far as a quick intro to Max. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's all I got at this point. And I'll open it up for questions because uh, I uh, sort of had to breeze through uh, a, lot of these, a lot of these bits and pieces. All right. All done. Yes. Okay. So, um, I, I picked up Max at, uh, at UNT uh, up in Denton, um, so it was part of the music uh, part of the music department up there. So there's a lot of it that's going on in uh, in university, and then uh, some folks use it like Radiohead's credited it. Uh, different bands use it for uh, different um, music effects. Some uh, artists use it for uh, installations. I've used uh, Max for installations before, um, just because of the interactive nature of it. Um, we set up installations where uh, it was something similar to this, but it was a um, it was a contact that was being triggered um, by motion. So when people would walk past a certain area, uh, a motion sensor would sort of uh, hit a hit a trigger, and that would then activate something in Max, either a video or a sound or something like that. Um, so you can set it up for for uh, a lot of different um, a, lo a lot of different uh, uses. Right. Um, so uh, the the basic advantage of Max is, is it's like ultimately customizable. You can make it any way that you want. Um, in terms of resources, the help files are really really good um, because it does does show you examples of how everything works. Uh, Max is a uh, you have to pay for Max, uh, but there is a free version of Max called PD uh, for Pure Data, um, and that's built uh, in uh, in very much the same way with the same sorts of objects. A lot of them are named the same. Uh, and you can do a lot of the same uh, a lot of the same operations through uh, through PD. So that's one way to sort of like start for free. Um, there's a bunch of tutorials online, and uh, people make objects like left and right. So there's a lot of free objects you can kind of grab and incorporate into uh, into your patches. Anywhere else? Uh, back there with the glasses. Yeah, um, so uh, so my stuff is up on Bandcamp, uh, just like Ronnie Garza at Bandcamp uh, dot com. Um, so so that's where 
my stuff is at. And I use Max for about half of it um, for recording or for generating sounds. Uh, and it's also good for live performance. Um, the, there, uh, the person have a question behind? Um, besides MIDI, um, I'm not really sure. I'm, I'm sort of like uh, kind of amateur level of uh, being able to, to really explain uh, Mac. So um, there's, there's MIDI and there's, there's hardware outs. There's like this M audio that I'm using. So you can, you can output sound directly from like a, uh, like a large uh, 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 audio interface, uh, that sort of thing. Um, but beyond that, uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, you'd have to read up. Anyone else? Any questions? Where is it mostly used? I mean, it's it's used all over the place. It's just it's just sort of like behind the scenes. So if you want if you wanted to do like an interactive installation, for instance, like in museums and stuff, you'll see you'll see Max being used in in museums, especially with interactive installations, uh, stuff that that is affected by either somebody walking through or hitting a switch or something like that. So you see it like in galleries when there's in especially interactive installations or um, in chamber music that is, is specifically made for this. So like there's, there's concerts um, where, uh, where people get together just for this kind of uh, software and music and, uh, and have like el electroacoustic concerts, basically. Um, So um, with the with the gloves, um, let me see if I can if I can uh, show it again real quick. Uh, so so, but we're not taking any of that sound. That's the thing. We're not taking any of that sound. What we're doing is we're changing that sound. Into, into data. So the data is then affecting uh, the rest of the patch. So in this case, it was changing the, the rate uh, that the video was playing. So it was either speeding up the video or slowing down the video. Um, and, and that's based off of this, this number up here, because this, this number is connected to a rate object for this, um, for this video. So depending on if that number goes from two to lower, uh, to like one or something, something in there, uh, then it will it will change the rate of the video, and you can hook the, the the idea is that you can hook it up to anything. You can hook up these gloves and this string of numbers to either oscillators or to sound files. Like at the beginning, um, at the beginning, this was just hooked up uh, to a sound file player or to to a, actually a bunch of different sound file players uh, that were going on at the same time. So. Um, So in this case, it's, uh, it's either turning sound files on or turning them off uh, or playing them at different rates. And uh, since it's light sensitive, uh, the, the proximity to the light changes how it, how it reacts. So um, this is just an, a different way to set it up. Uh, you can set it up uh, with gloves or um, just, like the, uh, just like the components here, you can take out the individual components and then just hook these up uh, to, to something else, to, to, um, to the wall or to the floor. And then depending on how shadow moves or how light sources uh, are, are activated, it would, uh, it would then uh, sort of create an effect. They go, they go right, they go right here to this, to this, um, to this box. So um, the photo cells, the uh, the uh, the photo resistors, uh, are these things right here. These are the photo resistors. There's two of them, and each each one is in a glove. It's just extended out with these with these cords, cords just like this, right? So imagine a cord like this attached to the circuit board and then coming all the way off of it to a glove. And all that does is it changes the pitch of the theremin. Um, if we were to, again, switch over to just the basic sound, 
that's all it, that's all it's creating and and uh, we're not using again we're not using the sound we're just using the numbers that it, that uh, we can that we can parse from the sound to then uh, do anything we want that's why max is, is is useful because you can do anything you want with it if you wanted to just activate a video to start playing for instance then you can do that if you wanted to modify the rate then you can do that if you wanted to start a sound file then you can do that if you wanted to start a sound file uh, at at one moment and then 10 seconds later start another one and then 30 seconds later start another one you can you can do that you can just build it any way that you want to okay. DJs um I don't know um I don't know um maybe I, you can the the thing is it's so versatile you can use it for for pretty much anything so you can use it for just recording if you wanted to Yeah, um, I, I, I haven't seen that. Again, I've, I've just sort of seen it in university before. There's a lot of, um, there's, there's video uh, motion detection. So uh, sometimes people will set up a camcorder, and the camcorder will be uh, running to the computer. And then based on the, the light and the shadow from, from what it's seeing, it can then activate stuff. Um, and, then, and then I've seen a lot of body suits. Uh, that's, been, that's been kind of popular, again, sort of like in university or, or galleries where um, the, the suits themselves have sensors built into it. Uh, my phone, for instance, uh, has, a, has a, a Max app. And um, so I can hit switches uh, if I'm connected to the same Wi-Fi. Uh, I can hit switches on my phone. That will then activate stuff on the computer. And uh, it also has uh, these uh, uh, sensors built into them, accelerometers and these sort of like tilt sensors and that sort of stuff. So you can, you can get that data. You can get motion data, uh, again, just in the form of numbers. So this is it's like a highly sort of like you, you just translate numbers and math into like motion or a sequence or something like that. So the it's it's a pure pure uh, audio. So the the breadboard is just an example of what's of what's in here. So, so there's another circuit board in here that's, that's the same schematic, the same design. And that is going with just an, uh, an audio cable. So that audio cable is going to uh, this hardware interface, this M-Audio hardware interface that you can hook up a microphone to or a guitar or whatever. So it's just, again, taking in that wee, wee sound. That, that's all that it's doing. Uh, and, you're, and we're just using that. We're just translating that uh, away from sound and into numbers. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so that's what we were hearing uh, earlier. Um, it's 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 literally generating that sound, and and that sound is is being uh, parsed by the fiddle object. Fiddle sees the sound and it goes, "Oh, this is the pitch. This is the amplitude right now." And as it changes, then that allows you to uh, to 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 have uh, basically like uh, motion uh, motion activated stuff because then you can use objects like past or uh, or the counter object to s to say when it when the amplitude is over this range or when the pitch is beyond this frequency then do this then do that um, or sort of a more random kind of kind of connection. You know, the, the closest thing, and I don't know if it's set up like that, but over at IMAS there used to be that wall thing where you'd go up and you touch those, those blocks up on the wall. That seems to be something similar to, to I don't know it, what's running that, but that's, that's something that w has been up at IMAS in the kids' center for like the longest time. And it's just kind of like a tactile kind of fun thing. It's like a one-to-one -one kind of like this makes this sound, this makes that sound, this makes that sound. So you can set that up uh, very, very easily with Max um, or PD. Okay. All right. If there's uh, any other questions, otherwise I'll go ahead and wrap up now. Where, where do you see the future of the 
Um, I think that I think that interactive stuff is fun. So you might see more uh, dance hall kind of like uh, interaction with this. And it's also, I think, being used a lot more in, with bands these days for live performance. Um, so I, I don't know exactly. Um, you can you can do it to set up a concert. I mean, you can play videos from it. You can you can control your various different sounds and you have channels as well. So um, I mean, it, it's sort of all over the place. People use it in a lot of different ways. I've, I've seen the Wii controller being used a lot since Wii came out because you can you can take those also have the accelerometers and those sort of sensors built into them that you could stream into uh, into Next. 